Okay, g'day all, welcome to another video. So today I, whoops, get that off the screen. Today I wanna to talk about the shift instructions. The video is called, bro, do you even shift? Clever. Okay, so the shift instructions, as you're probably aware, they take a bit string in a register or memory and they shift the bits, either left or right. But there's some other interesting instructions too, things like rotates, arithmetic shifts, rotates through the carry flag, the double precision shifts. So we're gonna have a bit of a look at all of it. Yeah, so the first ones that I wanted to have a look at was um, shift left and shift right. So my C++ program here has got a little definition here for the assembly function that we're just about to run. Another one down here called shift double test, which we'll go through when we're shifting double precision. Uh, then I've got a function here, print bits, which is the same as before uh, the last video. It just prints out the binary of, of the um, parameter here, P, uh, except this one also includes the carry. Down here in the main method, all I've got is I'm just setting uh, a, a parameter, P1, uh, initializing the carry to zero, then we print out the bits. Uh, then we perform our shift operation, we print the bits, and uh, there's a bit of a C in dot get here. So this is an infinite loop, and I'm hoping that what happens is I can just hold down the enter key, and it'll sort of animate. It's gonna be pretty dodgy animation, but yeah, it should give us a good idea of exactly what these instructions do. Okay, so over here in assembly, uh, at the very top, I've got a bunch of stuff to do with saving and restoring the carry flag, because I wanna make sure that um, we can see exactly what these instructions are doing with the carry flag. Uh, and down here in shift test, all I've done is moved the parameter that we're passed into RDX. Now that's gonna be passed in C++ as a pass by reference. Uh, I've used the ampersand in uh, C++ just here. Yeah, so pass by reference in assembly actually means pass a pointer. Yeah. Um, all right, so we move the value of that pointer uh, into RDX, then I restore whatever flags there was from before. Uh, then we perform our operation. And the last little bit is all about setting up the return value, the carry flag that is in EAX, uh, saving the flags and yeah, storing the result of that shift back in the um, parameter that we've got just here. Okay, so the first operation that we're gonna look at is shift left. I might change this to 64 bits. So shift left RDX one. If I hit run, we should get a pretty good idea of what's happening. Uh, it's just a bunch of zeros over here in the high end of uh, RDX or our parameter. And then there's a couple of ones in the bottom. But if I hit enter, what you'll see is that all of the bits have shifted to the left one bit, one space. And if I keep hitting enter, you'll see the bits marching across to the left all the way over till they reach the very left hand side, the most significant bit. Then if we hit enter one more time, you'll see that it shifts into the carry flag. Yeah, that C just there is the carry flag. Okay, so the carry flag actually holds the last bit that was shifted out. Yeah, so it's pretty simple really. With shift left, you just shift all of your bit pattern to the left and what comes in on the right hand side is zeros. Yeah. But if we just keep hitting enter, you can just see all of the bits shift out eventually and end up with zero. Um, if we try shift right and we hit a bit of a run, uh, you'll see that's pretty simple too, except the bit pattern now is not shifting to the left, but to the right one space each time. Uh, once again, you'll notice that the bits that shift out on the right hand side, the last bit that shifted out becomes the carry. Okay, so just a, a couple of little things about shifting left and right. The amount that you're shifting by when you're using an immediate operand just here, say one or five or whatever, with 64 bit shifts, it's a little bit strange, but it's ended with uh, 63. If we try and shift RDX right by 64, so you might expect that that's gonna clear the register, um, shift all of the bits to the right 64, but it's not. Um, because if you and 64 with 63, you actually get zero. So if we run this and hit enter a whole bunch of times, there you go. Yeah, so you can see that it's actually not shifting anything at all. Uh, but if you shift something like 65, uh, that's gonna become one. That's gonna become a shift right of one because 65 and 63 in binary is one. There you go. So that might be worth knowing. Uh, you can't actually shift left or right 64 bits. And the same goes with 32-bit shifts too. So if we had here uh, EDX and we were shifting 32, it's not gonna work. 32-bit uh, shifts are anded with 31. It's bizarre, but that's just what happens. The odd one out here is 16-bit shifts. So if you wanna shift left or right 16-bit variables and you wanna shift by 16 bits, you can actually do that. Yeah, so 16-bit shifts aren't anded with uh, 15. They're actually anded with 31. Bizarre. 
There's special versions of these instructions. If your bit shift, shift left or right, is one as an immediate operand just here, then you get a special version which will also update the OF or the um, the overflow flag. Okay, so the overflow flag, if you're doing a one bit shift, is gonna tell you if the sign changed. If EDX was negative and it became positive, then overflow is gonna be one. Yeah, so that might be handy to know. Uh, the other thing about these one bit shifts is they're a smaller instruction. So if you're strapped for space, you wanna make your algorithm or your, your loop as small as you possibly can, uh, it might be a good idea to use one bit shifts just here. They used to be quicker. I think um, they're about the same speed uh, nowadays, so you won't really get a speed increase. You can shift by a variable amount, but only if it's CL. Yeah, so you couldn't do just here, you couldn't do AL like that, it's not gonna work. Uh, but if you wanna shift by a variable amount, then you could go like MOV CL, say five and CL. Yeah, so the only variable that you can use here is CL. You can't use memory uh, or any of the other registers, only CL. It's probably worth knowing. Uh, we should actually run a little demo as well of uh, shifting values other than one. Let's go five. Okay, so if we're shifting left by five, whoops, all you'll see is that uh, the bit pattern is moved five spaces to the left. Uh, once again, the carry flag is gonna reflect the last bit shifted out. Something strange has happened there. Oh, I've only got a 32-bit shift. That's what it is. RDX. No, sorry, we were shifting a 32-bit operand just there and uh, printing out all 64 bits. Yeah, so it wasn't displaying properly. But you will see that the the, the final bit shifted out once again is uh, is uh, in the carry flag, and you can shift any amount that you want. Okay, so I want to talk about uh, arithmetic shift left and right. So one of the interesting things you can do with uh, shifting is you can speed up uh, integer division or multiplication. So if we're shifting to the right uh, by some amount, say n, then what you're going to end up with is your number being divided by 2 to the power of n. Yeah, so if you want to divide by, say, 4, well, 4 is 2 squared, so you would shift 2 to the right, and you'll get pretty much... Um, yeah, you'll divide your result by 4. That's only going to work if your number is unsigned. Yeah, so if you're using shift right and your number is unsigned, then you're pretty much going to get the uh, the correct answer every time. Yeah, so this is going to continuously divide by different powers of 2. But if we're working with a signed number and it happens to be negative, if we hit run and we do this a few times, shift to the right, what you'll see over here on the left-hand side is that zeros are coming in which is no good for division because if that's a one just there, that actually means that the number is negative. And if that's a zero, that leftmost bit, this is the sign bit, uh, then it means the number is positive. So after you know shifting right one space, we actually change the sign of our number from negative to positive, which doesn't really make sense if you're trying to divide by a power of two. So to combat this weird little problem, what they made was SAR, shift arithmetic right. And if we run this and we shift it a few times, all right, what you'll see now is that the sign bit is coming in on the left-hand side as bits are being shifted out on the right. So that's the only difference between uh, shift right and shift arithmetic right, that shift right will just bring zeros in and shift arithmetic right will bring in whatever the sign bit was. Yeah, so if that's a, if that's a positive number, then SAR is gonna behave exactly the same way that um, shift right did. Okay, so if we go back just for a second to uh, shift left and we run that. Um, so shift left doesn't have the sign bit coming in here on the right. It wouldn't make sense to duplicate the sign bit. Yeah, so shift left and shift arithmetic left or SAL are actually the same instruction. You can actually pause it if we just go here and uh, have a little break point. And you can have a look at the disassembly if you want. So windows, where are we? Disassembly. Yeah, there we go. So show bytecode. All right, so the bytecode to that instruction just there is 48D1E2. If we stop it and we change this to SHL and we run it again, uh, what we'll see, 48D1E2, exactly the same machine code. So shift left and shift arithmetic left are the same instruction. Before we move on to uh, rotates, I want to mention one more thing about shifts, which may or may not be interesting. Shifting by zero is a no-op. Uh, so if we show, 
by zero, uh, it's actually a no op, which means it doesn't affect the flags at all. Oh, get rid of this break point. Yeah, so it's not gonna it's not gonna update the flags after checking the value in RDX or anything. It's just not gonna do anything. Uh, it's a no op. So some instructions you can cleverly use, um, you know, the same value and get something interesting in the flag. Something like um, and eax eax. Now you'll often see this sort of instruction here. If people want to know if eax is zero, for example. Uh, you might do something like this and check the zero flag. You can't do that sort of thing with shifting left and, and, and zero. It's actually a no op. It's not going to update the flags. Um, okay, so now I want to move on to the rotate. So rotate left and right. We'll start with the uh, roll. Rotate to the left. And we'll change this back to one. It's the same as the um, shift instructions in that you can have a, a, a memory operand here or a register. I don't think I mentioned that you can have a memory operand just here, but you can. Uh, if you want to shift by a variable amount, your only option is CL. And there's a special version of these instructions with one bit rotates, which is going to update the overflow flag as well. And uh, and yeah, that's about it. So let's just uh, hit run and see what a rotate does. Hold on. What's that awesome dude doing in my face? Alrighty. So if we just uh, keep hitting enter here for a while, it looks the same as shift. Now I'll admit, I'll be the first to admit it looks the same as shift, but when we get to the other side, the bits actually come back in on the right. So it rotates very similar to a shift, except as bits are shifted out on the left, they come back in on the right. Yeah, that's for a rotate left. So if I can animate this, I don't know if that looks like an animation. It's not a very good one, but yeah, you see the bits are just rotating round and round in circles. Yeah, so that's rotate left. Oh, you might also notice that the last bit rotated out on the left became the carry, just like before. So when you perform a rotate, uh, the carry flag and that first little bit over on the right are always going to be equal. Let's do a few five rotates. Yeah, there we go. So it's just rotating or it's just shifting everything to the to the left and uh, the bits are coming in on the right, but it's uh, rotating five bits at a time. Okay, ROR, exactly the same thing, except uh, instead of rotating to the left, we're gonna be rotating our values to the right. Now, once again, uh, as bits are rotated out on the right-hand side, they're gonna come back in on the left because that's what a rotate does. Rotate, 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 rotate. And once again, you'll see that the carry flag and this final left bit, these will always be equal. So whatever the last bit rotated out was, that's gonna be your carry flag. It's also gonna be that highest or most significant bit at the top. Okay, so that's rotation, uh, left and right. Pretty interesting instruction, really. The next instruction, and this is where things I think get a little bit, a little bit unusual. This is the kind of thing that you can't really do easily in, in other languages like C++ or whatever. I mean, you can't do rotates very easily either, but RCL and RCR. Rotate left and right through the carry flag. Uh, these are pretty strange instructions, but let's have a look at what they do. I might just change that back to one. Okay, so rotate left through the carry flag is going to do exactly the same thing as rotate left, except it's going to add an extra bit. So it's almost as though the carry flag was part of this parameter. And this 64-bit register now is being treated as a 65-bit register with the carry flag on the top. Quite strange, really. Let's move to the very... Let's move to the very left-hand side. Okay, so you can see just there that this bit right here, when we rotated it one more space, it didn't come in over the side like a regular rotate. Instead, it went straight to the carry. And if I hit enter again, what you'll see is after it's rotated from the carry, it comes back in on the right. Rotate through the carry flag. Fair enough. You can just keep going, really. Yeah, so it just treats your parameter as though it was 65 bits. Adds the carry flag as well. Um, the same is true with RCR. Rotate right through the carry flag, except instead of rotating your bits to the left, we're going to be going the other way this time. Yeah, but if you have a bit of a squiz at that, you should see that the bits are rotating out here on the right-hand side. They're coming into the carry, and then they're coming back into the register. Yeah, fair enough. Rotate left and right through the carry flag. Okay, so that's a little bit about shifting and rotating and rotating through the carry flag, but we've also got these other interesting instructions called the double precision shifts. Uh, these, are, these are pretty strange, but um, yeah, we better set things up so that we can deal with this a little bit. Um, okay, so I'll put a binary value in here. Doesn't really matter what it is. Something like that. 
and we'll change to print out all of the bits of both operands. 64, so it just got a few little changes here. We don't have to worry about the carry flag anymore, and we're calling this function. Okay, so now we're going to be calling uh, a different function. This is uh, this one down here, shift double test. And uh, yeah, we're going to test out shift right double precision. Let's hit run and see what happens. Okay, so that's the initial values just there of RAX and RBX, or uh, these two parameters, respectively. Yeah, P1 becomes RAX and P2 becomes RBX. Uh, but what's going to happen if we perform this uh, shift right double precision? It's almost as though RAX is placed beside RBX, and the bits of RBX are going to be rotated or shifted into RAX. So if we just hit enter, um, what you'll see is that the 12 lowest bits of RBX, or this second parameter just here, have been shifted into the top 12 bits of RAX. And the lowest 12 bits of RAX have been shifted downwards. Yeah, so, so all that's really happened is that RBX is put, you know, left-hand side, and RAX is put on the right-hand side, and the whole thing has been shifted as though it were a 128-bit integer. Uh, RBX has not changed. Yeah, RBX is the same. Okay, so that's shift right double precision, just like a MOV, but with a bitwise precision. Uh, if we do a shift left double precision, then we should see that it's pretty much uh, the same thing, except uh, we're shifting to the left. So has that... I don't think that's done very much at all. So, th so the top of RBX is actually zero, so we can't really tell what it did, but... Let's just put in a few more ones here, and we'll hit run and see what happens. I don't think it's big enough. We didn't think it's big enough. Let's put in some more ones. Oh, it's too big. Integer too big. Okay, so now we can see that at the top of RBX, uh, this second parameter just here, we've got some bits. Uh, if we shift right double precision, then you'll see that those bits have now entered the low 12 bits of RAX or the first parameter. Okay, so that's shifting left and right double precision. Uh, what I do want to say is that shifting left and right double precision, you can use 32-bit parameters here. Uh, if you want, you can use 8, or oh, sorry, 16-bit parameters here if you want as well. And uh, it's just going to shift left and right using these smaller registers. But the thing about um, double precision shifts is you can't use 8-bit parameters. Yeah, so instead of shifting left and right uh, double precision with 8-bit parameters, you've just got to perform a shul uh, with the 16-bit equivalent, so say AX. Yeah, so AX is actually made of AH and AL. So if you want to perform an 8-bit uh, double precision shift, then yeah, just use the 16-bit version of the register and shul. Okay, the final thing that I wanted to talk about was uh, not misalignment. Uh, the final thing that I wanted to talk about was the speeds of these things. So I did a few little tests. If you want to get a really, really good idea of exactly how fast these instructions go using your hardware, then you really want to check out Agna Fogg's instruction manuals. Uh, I'll hopefully do some videos on Agna Fogg's instruction manuals shortly, and uh, I'll leave the link down below so that you can download them and have a bit of a look. Anyway, they've got absolutely amazing information, including just how fast all of these instructions are. Um, this is just my own little tests. Uh, I just had a loop run through a billion times, and I s uh, tested it with a clock. This is milliseconds over here. Uh, but what you'll find is that shifting left and right using registers and an immediate value is really, really fast. Uh, I should say that it's actually even faster than this, since the way that I tested this, you'll actually get a lot of instructions building up in the uh, instruction queue, and they can't execute because there's a register dependence. Yeah, so you'll actually get these things, you know, in practice, if there's no register dependence, to run two or three times this speed. Um, okay, so shifting left and right using CL is about half the speed. Uh, then memory shifts are obviously a lot slower. You know, reading and writing to memory is, is really, really slow. So compare this, though. Um, really slow. And after we've done the first iteration of the loop, that memory operand is going to be cached. So even when the memory operand is cached, the shift left and right is still going to be slow. Uh, shifting left and right with a memory operand and CL is going to be slow as well. Um, the rotates are fast, so long as you're using registers and immediates. 
the rotates with a parameter of one uh, really fast as well. For some reason, they're a little bit slower. I don't really know why. Um, I should say also that the shift left and right using one as your operand is the same speed. It's this fast one just here. Um, rotating left and right through the carry flag is quite slow. Um, any rotations using memory are going to be much, much slower. And as we go down here, what do we see? This is extremely slow just here. So rotating left and right through the carry flag using memory, it's extremely slow, an extremely slow instruction. So, you know, many, many times slower than, uh, than, than a simple rotate. And the double precision shifts, you know, once again, they're very, very slow. Yeah, but it's worth keeping in mind that something, something like the simple shifts or the arithmetic shifts really really fast anyway that's all that i wanted to say on the topic of shifting uh, i hope that was interesting and um i might if i ever finish this document included on my new website i want to give a shout out to as talk dog good on your bus he made my website and uh we went to uni together and studied music legend anyway i'll leave a link down below to my new website and uh, if i finish this document i'll upload it to the website i'll also upload this video to the website anyway thanks for watching have a good one